What's going on, Melanated Gods of Earth, brothers and sisters? I'm your host, Ramudisa the High King. If you're new, consider smashing the subscribe, thumbs up, let the algorithm know what's good. Let other like-minded souls know that we're Archer family. If you have been checking out my previous videos on the situation in Niger, what it means for Western powers, as well as Western powers in general reacting to the rise of African people, including the likes of Elon Musk and the political wannabe president, John Steenhazen of the DA, wanting to take EFF song to the UN. No one likes a militant African, brothers and sisters. But of course, the song that is, in case you missed it, I don't know if it's safe enough to play for YouTube, but I'm just going to, you know, fix on it real quick. But before that, let's get, let's watch, um, ooh. I'm going to share this little news clip reel. And it escalates as Niger's new military leaders have reportedly suspended, get this, all exports <laughs> of uranium and gold to France, which relies on resources very, very heavily from the West African country. Let's uh, shed some light on this with RT contributor Rachel Master. Where would the coup leaders in Niger possibly get the idea that France had any interest whatsoever in intervening in its former colony? Well, it might have something to do with a statement that was put out by the French presidential palace, the Élysée, on Sunday that read, quote, anyone attacking French nationals, the army, diplomats and interests would see France respond immediately and intractably. And by French nationals, they mostly just mean one guy named Mr. Uranium, because hmm. Niger is France's top supplier of it, providing 15% of its total supply and a fifth of the European Union's. And the mineral is absolutely critical to power France's nuclear reactors. You see, France's energy independence is ironically very dependent on Niger, which How was ironic. why French President Emmanuel Macron sounded awfully angry about something happening a whole continent away. Anyone attacking French nationals, the army, diplomats, and rights of way would see France respond immediately and intractably. The president of the republic will not tolerate any attack against France and its interests. Yeah, those French interests would certainly include uranium. And now we've been hearing multiple Western press reports that the military junta, now in charge, has cut off exports of both uranium and gold to France. And Ooh. that comes as really bad timing for Paris, which has become even more reliant on its nuclear power plants after cutting itself off from Russian gas with the rest of the EU to impress Ukrainian President <laughs> Vladimir Zelensky. And kind of the same way that college mm. party guys work themselves into a frenzy and do dumb things like jump off a roof to impress girls. Germany is already on the verge of deindustrializing because Europe's economic engine can't run on wind and sun. Who knew? Apparently not Berlin. But at least France had not completely bought into Berlin's green fantasies and mothballed all the nuclear power plants, although Macron was certainly heading in that direction. So plan B after the Russian gas cut off was to power them back up. But now Niger has suspended the export of the uranium that they require with the immediate effect. But hey, no problem though, right? Because France has other suppliers like Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, except who largely controls the transport of those to Europe? Russia's nuclear giant, Rosatom. Whoops. Mm, mm, mm. So the Western powers are losing on all fronts. They shot themselves in one foot with the whole Russia-Ukraine situation, and they are now shooting themselves in the other foot with Africa. And the situation in Niger. Wicked stuff. And of course we are here for it ladies and gents. The world is changing. And the thing that we should do as African people is stay dangerous. A crown on the other side is being rejected because he wanted to join BRICS. That was funny. Africa reacts to French President Macron embarrassing BRICS rejection. Hmm. Checky, my boy. Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin spokesperson, also expressed confusion regarding Macron's attempt to secure a BRICS invitation from South Africa, stating, We honestly don't know how Macron could participate in the summit, as whom or for what purpose. We don't have such information. Uh... Ooh. 
with macaron, <laughs> that must have hurt. <laughs> Welcome to Tuna Chicken's Africa React. I'm your host, Mikey Mushi, and this is the show where we go online and react to viral videos that concern the African continent. Uh, before we start, uh, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It's the best way to show YouTube this is a great video and it will recommend it to more like-minded people like you. Uh, so today's video, we are going to react to Macron uh, when uh, he numerously got rejected to attend the upcoming BRICS summit in uh, South Africa, right? And uh, we are going to react to how he reacted after getting re uh, like uh, the rejection letter from Russia, from uh, South Africa, and basically every BRICS member, okay? So uh, we will watch the video and we will see his outrageous reaction, you know, his tantrum, okay? So let's get started. All of these things reflect the desperation of France. Don't just look at them as actions in isolation. Between the pension fund reform protests and the recent protest with the murder of the young African man, boy, Nahel, France is on the brink and they are desperate. So now he's desperate. After facing rejection from Russia, without Africa, France was slotted to a third world country. They've known this prophecy. Russia to attend this year's BRICS meeting in Africa, French President Emmanuel Macron criticized Russia's presence on the African continent during the new global financing pact summit just held in Paris. Macron stated that Moscow's influence in the region does not benefit the international community, mm. referring to it as a destabilizing force in Africa. The Kremlin swiftly dismissed President Macron allegations, denying that Russia is a destabilizing force in Africa. This accusation came as a surprise to many in Africa, particularly considering France's very destabilizing actions in Africa. Mm. At present, 14 African countries are forced by France, through the colonial pact, to deposit 85% of their reserves in the Central Bank of France, which That's is tragic. under the control of the French Ministry of Finance. France's influence has diminished due to the perceived inability of French troops to quell violence perpetrated by armed groups in these countries, leading to an increase in anti-French sentiment in the former French colonies. This situation has sparked a war of words between Moscow and Paris in recent years. Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin spokesperson, also expressed confusion regarding Macron's attempt to secure a BRICS invitation from South Africa, stating, we honestly don't know how Macron could participate in the summit, as whom or for what purpose. We like, don't what have does he want? information. What does he want in BRICS? He knows that BRICS Ooh, is anti-Western period. <laughs> okay, uh, that was our reaction. Uh, you've heard it. Uh, this guy tried many times to get invited uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, going uh, through, uh, trying to go through Russia, trying to go through India, trying to go through uh, South Africa, uh, but uh, still... He's been rejected, of course, for obvious reasons, right? You know, uh, <laughs> it's part of the G7, part of NATO, yep. as in yep. BRICS is the opposite of what, uh, the, like, of what NATO and uh, this All system was are building, right? BRICS is basically trying to build an alternative, right? A better, more fairer, more equitable uh, economic uh, system, okay? So, uh, the, our reaction is uh, because this guy got rejected, he's now pointing fingers and uh, blaming Russia for something that Russia has not been doing, right? Since these Western countries, uh, like uh, this trunk of Western countries got independent, they've been used, uh, neo-colonized by France, right? And right. that's the results of the ongoing coups that you see in West Africa, because the citizens themselves are disgruntled, right? Uh, like terrorist attacks, there is not enough money in the country, although these countries are filled with the resources, right? Like filled with resources from gold, diamonds, uh, uranium, oil, but all these them countries things. are earning nothing, okay? So, why is it important for us to tell you about uh, Macron and how is the media covering it, okay? So, most of you guys uh, and uh, most of uh, people who watch us uh, always wonder how we always have this in-depth knowledge of what's actually going on and what, not what the media wants to go on, okay? Uh, we use this analytical platform called Ground News, right? Uh, so, uh, Ground News is a platform that makes it easy to compare news sources, read between mm. the lines, free of mm. propaganda, free of media biases, and free from the algorithm that 
love to give you what you want, right? Grounded in this platform that analytically uh, just gives you the news where you choose what you want to read and to know about and you learn how that content is being covered by all the media, uh, like the media spectrum from the uh, left to the right, okay? So let you give you a good example of uh, how we even are following this uh, Macron story and how it's been covered in the news. On that note, between them being booted out of <clears throat> their former francophone colonies, keep in mind they were booted out of Mali, they were booted, I think, out of Chad as well, I'm not sure. And rather than go back to France from Mali, they went into Niger. And with Niger being the linchpin of this whole new colonial project, because without, like I said, without um, Niger, France has no energy sources, no... No nada. Niger is not the new Libya. The delegation from Niger visiting Captain Traore in the Burkina Faso. But wait a minute now. Who is he? Hmm? The delegation from Niger visited Captain Ibrahim Traore in Burkina Faso. <coughs> This comes after meeting with Mali President Kanal Isinigoita. In recent days, the West Africa bloc has sanctioned Niger and threatened to use military to restore the democratic government that has overthrown by the military leader. After that statement, the readers from Burkina Faso, Mari and Guinea warned ECOWAS not to invite Niger. Our delegation had the honor and privilege of being received this evening by the president of the transition of Burkina Faso. During this hearing, the situation in Niger was discussed. This situation is color and this situation is under control. We also talked about support. It must be said we have received very strong support from Burkina Faso since, as you know, a number of ECOWAS countries have decided to apply several sanctions measures against Niger. But in addition, every time I hear where I'm an African um, president speaker of applying sanctions, blah blah blah, they sound literally like I said in a previous video agents of Western democratic representations, or they are representatives of Western democracy, not really beholden to the people of Africa. Hence, as soon as Africans are saying we're going to boot out the uh, puppet regime, guess who gets nervous? To these sanctions, there is a talk of military intervention. During our exchange, we spoke precisely about the situation because we would not like Niger to become in Libya. And we will combine our efforts so that this situation does not occur. In, in coordination with our brothers in Burkina Faso, we have decided to undertake a number of activities to be able to deal with the situation, to secure our population and to secure our two countries. Right on, right on. The greatest mistake African leaders made in the past was allowing, not really allowing, but obviously not holding Western powers accountable to what they did in Libya, period. To this day, I think we have options. We need to remind them that they destroyed Libya. I'm pretty sure there was a YouTube video about it. I think I saw a thumbnail somewhere, somewhere. I'll check it out later on. But in this one is like what american blinken seeks partnership with african youth the irony of all of that is the african youth is completely aware of western influence in this continent 
we are revolting against them. Yet they think they can come seek our aid. So they want to corrupt our leaders and then they want to corrupt the youth. So we serve who? Everybody but ourselves as a people? in Africa. The approach is focused on what we can do with Africa, not for Africa. Man. It reflects the incredible diversity and influence of the continent. It also recognizes the important role that young Africans especially have in shaping our planet for the generations to come. Our journey. <laughs> We're going to be the only ones on this planet. So, whatever destiny they're trying to a push on us we should reject and maintain our own identity as african people the youth and our future is ours and ours alone um, our countries the united states our partners in africa we can only meet today's challenges we can only actually deliver results for our people if we collaborate as equal partners and that collaboration needs to continue it's too late uh, that idea is really at the heart of our approach towards Sub-Saharan Africa. The approach is focused on what we can do with Africa, not for Africa. It reflects the incredible diversity and influence of the continent. It also recognizes the important role that young Africans especially have in shaping our planet for the generations to come. Look, you all know these statistics very, very well. And it's important that more of my fellow citizens know them too. Mm. More than 60% of Africa's population is under the age of 25. Mm -hmm. By 2030, in just a few short years, two in every five people on our planet will be young <clears throat> and African. Black, so, black, black. Looking around this room today, Millenator gods of earth shall inherit this planet. Alright? Stay black and proud, people. I can tell, I know, that because of that fact, and because of all of you, that future can and will be very bright. Hmm. We're committed. We're committed Doesn't include to you, African Lincoln. Leaders like you, today and for years to come, so that together we have an opportunity to build a world that's a little bit more stable, a little bit more resilient, a little bit, a more. Little bit more prosperous for all. You've and had the time. As Liz said, Make sometimes change feels slow. Sometimes it feels like you're not making a difference or you're not making the big strides that you imagine. But every step forward, every step forward, takes you closer and closer to the goal that you have. Mm. And as you know, as you're taking that journey, and at some point you stop along the way, you will be amazed at the distance you've traveled. You will be amazed at the difference that you're making. For me, that's a source of incredible pride, that we have some small part to play in the incredible things that you're doing, uh, it really couldn't be better, be any better than that. So we know we're already making progress. And I know that your creativity, your optimism, your imagination, your energy, it's not only going to advance the connections between the United States and Africa, it's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference in your countries. It's going to make a difference around the world. And if you have the opportunity in life to actually make that kind of difference, um, it's one of the most powerful things you can experience. I could not be prouder of you, but maybe more important than that, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in the years ahead. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I just hope that, as I said to a few of your colleagues, if I'm still around in 20 years and come knocking at your door, you'll open it. <laughs> and remember me. Uh, Remember me? I am looking to you Bruh. to build the future that we all want. 
Congratulations. No, 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 no. Take it easy there, Mr. Blinken. <laughs> you know, when a president knows that they are staring down the barrel of a dark future and they are scrambling to clamor onto anything that will keep them from drowning. This is what I see, a crying civilization that is saying, please, Africans, please. You're going to the future. You, go and inherit the, um, you will inherit the earth. Don't leave us behind. Don't let us suffer in the mess that we've made. Looking at what has become of life of Western countries, we as Africans are better off literally sussing out the elements that are knowledgeable and the ones that are outright toxic and destructive to a society because who wants that madness? We as African people must focus on ourselves and our own destiny as a people on the continent and in the diaspora. It does not include Blinken. The descendants of colonizers, a beneficiary of apartheid, genocide, and these murderers for centuries now. Now they want to freaking force us to keep them um, sustained in the next um, new era? No. Mm -mm. To that end, the song that has both the Western powers and Elon Musk and the likes and the white supremacists in South Africa and in America and other countries is the Julius, not necessarily the Julius one, but... Uh, it's going places on the TikTok. We shall not be shamed for doing what we know must be done in the struggle for total emancipation of the motherland and her people. Never forget that family. Never forget, family, we are in a struggle for, for emancipation of ourselves and our ancestors, our descendants. We must promise them that which our ancestors were blessed with on this continent. If you haven't subscribed already, ladies and gents, make sure you do that thing. Thank you for watching, brothers and sisters, and I will see you in the next one. Stay royal. Peace.